Welcome to my channel now. This video is about simplifying construction and how do I mean that is because in refurbs, in extensions, in any kind of conversions, you're going to come up against existing buildings like this for example where we've got a small nib of brickwork and then we've studded all the way through to flatten the wall off. We've got all kinds of kitchen appliances against this wall so stud work's the ideal thing because you can bring all your cabling through, you can put back boxes where you want them, you can put water supplies where you want them and get waste pipes out. But where we've got an existing bit of brickwork here, there are one or two ways you could do this. For example, I could have kept my stud work back flush with the brickwork. And then when we plasterboarded this, we could have then wet plastered this. So we'd use something like hard wall and then a multi finish all the way over everything to make it flat. However, sometimes when you meet an existing bit of brickwork like this and you put a level on it, you'll find that it's not plumb. Okay, so if I just hold this level on here, I can't, let me just have a little look at the bar. There we go, somewhere like that. You can see that it's actually not plumb. So if I was wet plastering this, what we'd have to do is put so much on to actually get it plumb back to our wall that your chances are you'd use bags and bags and bags of plaster on this. And I've seen it in the past where it gets sucked up too quick and it'll fall off. It just becomes live and falls off. You've got to seal this. So we'll avoid that because we've also got cables coming down here. We've got back boxes to put on. So what we've done is we found the tightest point, which is this corner, okay? So if you can imagine shining a laser across this wall, this top corner here was the bit which was proudest. That was the bit which was sticking out the most. We've then put our new head plate all the way through, parallel to our building datum all the way through, which is the glue lamp beams above us all the way through, and the back wall of the extension. And that is all set out nice and square. So what we're going to do is make a simple batten frame like this. We'll make that frame on the floor. So we'll cut the battens. It takes no time at all. We'll screw it all together. So we'll end fix battens together and we'll put it in. We can fix the top. We can fix the side. And then just using a spirit level, plumb up those frames using a concrete screw. I'll come on to what they are in a minute. We can just simply attach it all the way through and it speeds the job up no end other than trying to put one button up, the next button up, the next button up. Because what you'll find, I mean, I'm talking from experience here, is when I've done that in the past, no matter how good you are at plumbing something up, packing it and screwing it, you put your level this way and they're wobbling. And you think, oh, and then you start messing around and you can get into all kinds of troubles. The nice thing about making a frame up is all of your corners are connected and nice and flush. So you've got that really good relationship there. Let's have a quick measure up. So this wall is gonna be coming in here. So it's prudent for me to keep my first stud away. Let's keep it away 25 millimeters. That also enables the frame to definitely fit. So I'm just gonna take a measurement across. Um, we've got 1,080, so we'll take off 25 millimeters and we're gonna go 1,055. So that means I want a top and a bottom at 1055. And then the height of it is gonna be the same height as this sole plate here. Up to there, 2.4. So we're gonna go 2400. Zero, zero. And all I'm gonna need there is, I would say, four, four studs, a head and a sole plate. So we'll get them cut and screw them together. Right, so some of you watching might think, why is that batten blue? So if you don't buy a lot of roof batten, this is actually roof battening. Um, British standard battening comes in different colors. You can get red, blue, gold, um, in de depending on where you get it from and who you get it from. And the reason why we use this is because it's unlike normal two by one saw and battening, which has knots and you can literally snap it on a knot like this knot here, for example. This stuff here has been um, tested, more like stress graded, so it's a little bit safer. And the reason they do that is safer for roofers when they're roof uh, tiling and they're walking up the battens, they're less likely to snap, so it's a lot safer. I like using this because of the fact it's not much more expensive and you get a nice, a nice finish. Look, I've got my little mate here. You all right? Come on then, out of the way. So these are 4.8 meter lengths. I buy these because I know that I'm gonna get two from one. I've got some 3.6 meter lengths there, which are actually for the outside of this building prior to cladding. Um, I'm just gonna break them out so I can put a square end on each end. Sounds like my, my battery is flat. 
I have to get a new one. So I'm looking for four studs at 2.3, so we'll cut all those together. Make it a little bit, a little bit swifter. Right, let's pop a battery, another battery in this. These um, are high output, these particular batteries, whereas these ones are the standard um, M18s. I mean, these are pretty good, but these seem to last, obviously, much longer. So we'll cut those studs to 2.3 meters, all the same. Then we just need a head and sole plate. all my waste so um, it's best to buy right and you can save a bit of money put these down on the floor we want a head and a sole plate now what I'll find is a bendy bendy button for this because this one I picked up was quite bendy but it's absolutely perfect for short bits and we'll keep this for all of our heads and sole plates and that was 1055 millimeters we'll cut 1100 and we'll cut them back So now I've got all the bits I need for this stud wall. I'll just lay that down there. The next thing I want to do is make sure that I put the studs in the places that they might be best to go. Now the simple thing I need to look at here is board joins. The way this wall is worked out, there is a window which goes from top to bottom between these rooms. And from this stud, it's a full sheet that comes over to here of plasterboard. And then from that stud, it's another full sheet that comes over to here. So what I want to do is mark one of my heads and sole plates to make sure that I have a stud in the right position, okay? So by hooking that on there and measuring to 1200 here, that's where I need a timber. That's the most important one. The other ones I can set out wherever I want them. I know I've got one there. I know I've got one that end. I may as well have that one somewhere in the middle of those two. So it won't look the same, but there's a reason for it. Instead of just spacing them out equally, putting my plasterboard up, realizing if only that one was that way, I haven't got to cut it back, okay? So thinking ahead about your material, and that's what we need to do. So that is my top, and that is up. That's it, we'll transfer that back onto the floor. We don't need any benches to make this sort of stuff. And we're gonna have a top and a bottom. We'll set those out with a little square to keep it neat. So this is our plasterboard stud here. We've obviously got one at either end. We don't have to really mark those out. We're just holding them flush. And then we just want something to go in between the two. There we go. We'll pilot those up. Fixings. So we obviously use a pilot bit straight through the head and we're going to use five by 100s, okay? But they're absolutely perfect because they're nice and slim and you're not going to overdrive these and split that battening. And then this is the concrete screw, okay? So we'll drill a six millimeter masonry bit straight through the batten, in situ, straight into the wall. We'll then pack it and we'll screw this through and it will hold it back depending on what you're fixing into, they're called concrete screws. If I was using these in concrete, they're 7.5 millimeter, but you may need a seven millimeter drill bit, okay? Because concrete is less forgiving than a brick, for example. So what we do first is 
test it. We'll drill a hole, screw it in and see how it bites. And we'll start with a six mil, then a 6.5 or a seven or whatever the case may be. But these eliminate the use of a raw plug. When you use a raw plug, you still have to drill, say a seven mil hole, bang the plug through. Then the screw has got a lot of slack around it. And when you screw the head in, it sometimes pulls itself all the way through and it takes longer. So these are favored by tradespeople all over the place. So all I'll do is just pilot these up. I'm just gonna turn them over and pilot them through for a couple of screws for each one. Then we'll just get the screws in, ready. Can't see that hole. Visible. There we go. The other thing is this batten's lovely and wet as well and actually what that does it creates a little bit more give. If it was bone dry and you screw through these, your chances are you over screw it, you're going to split it but when it's wet it just seems to grip round everything and it works really nice. Then it's a simple matter of attaching them to the stud. Pop that at this end. Pop this at this end. And then what helps sometimes is to have a little block of something, like a piece of flat material underneath. So when you pull everything together, it is easier to get it nice and flat and flush. Just lay these out. So this is very basic carpentry, butt joints. Nothing more, don't need anything more than this. But that bit of ply just keeps everything absolutely perfect. The other thing about this batten, it's very regular. And you can see that the screws just pull in nice and softly because the batten isn't over dry. And even though I'm screwing right near to the end and they're countersunk and I haven't countersunk the hole, there's no splitting. I just know this material at like the back of my hand is just so nice for doing this kind of framing out and quick. So you might be thinking, why aren't you doing dot and dab? Why aren't you sticking the plasterboard? So we do do a lot of dot and dab, but from experience, when I've got a really nice flat wall here in timber, just to join that in with dot and dab, sometimes, unless you've got someone who's really good at sticking, it's not, not dead flat. And the key result when we're finished is we want to be able to put a decent straight edge all the way over and it to be nice and flat, especially when they've got a super do for fancy kitchen coming in here that's going to be fitted against this wall. So I'll just get the head on and then we'll put it in situ and I'll show you how easy that is as well. So it's nice and secure. I can just lift any stud, push it down like that, move my bit of timber back to this end and then whack the top on. Okay, so I'm gonna fix it in now. Now this is pretty easy too, because I've got two good datums, okay? Here and here. So I'm gonna pilot the frame here now to go straight back in. 
So what I'm going to do is drive a screw up. Now, because I'm close to the wall, I want to make sure I angle the screw back slightly so it'll go into there and I can get my drill in the other side. So I've got a slight angle on this, so I'm going to come out closer to there. Do another one here. Get another couple in. Same for this side as well. I'm going to fix this straight home. Pop the screws in that same screws. We're going to use the same screws everywhere on the timber to timber stuff. So let's just drive that back in there like that. You can see the angle to get my drill in. It's only slight, but if you drill it straight, you'll be falling off the screw. So it's made the battening super easy because the batten frame is doing all the work now. I've got no, it's going to hold it all together, hold it all up where we want it. And this is what makes, like when you're a chippy, a carpenter, doing jobs like this by taking all of the, setting out if you like, and do it all on the floor it's a lot easier because you're just going to hoist up the frame nice and lightweight, pop it into position carefully. Get a clamp, that will hold it for me. So, I mean, you don't need to clamp it if, you, if you're quite good and you can hold it, if you know what I mean. But I'm just going to clamp it for purposes of being able to demonstrate that it's safer. So I'm just going to clamp that on there and then it's just a matter of tapping it back flush and popping my fixings in. So the clamp really helps. And then over on the corner here. So we're tight against that as well. And here. Just tighten that one back. That screw must be sticking out and catching it. Yeah, a little look. Just a touch. There we go. clamp and then it's just a matter of pulling everything up gravity's on my side now So the observant viewer might think to themselves, did you really need that one there if you were trying to save money on timber? You could do without it. You could just have the top going in, but because this corner here is on the last course, I don't really want to put too many fixings through at the bottom here, close to the damp course, existing damp course. Um, so that's done quite a lot of the work for me. And now all we have to do is I'll get a masonry drill and I'll attach the furthest point, I'll attach this corner down here, okay? And we'll get that perfect. And then all we need to do then is pretty much put the spirit level away because we can just use either a spirit level as a straight edge, drill all our holes, get them all ready, get some packers, and then just go around screwing them up individually to get them flat. So let me give you an idea. So the fixings I'm gonna use now are the concrete screws. It's a T30, a Torx 30 bit. It's really common now. We use so many Torx screws. They're great because they don't, you know, the, the, it's like a PZ or a PS2 
they sort of like push themselves out under pressure. And then it's just a masonry drill. And they're really easy, these drill bits, or these fixings, in fact. So what we'll do is we'll just offer this against there. I'm gonna go straight through the button into that brick there. That's an engineering brick, so it may have holes in it. The chances are it may not bite, in which case I move my fixing up to there. But I'll, let's see how we go. If I've got plenty of meat in the brick to take that screw, I said I'll put my ear defenders on and I forgot. Did you see that? That's typical that is. So I apologise for doing that. I shall put them on. They're right there. Next, they're right there. They're nearly here. But before I screw that in, I'm going to get some packers because if you screw it in and you unscrew it, sometimes the thread will make the brick crack and it will become loose. So you want to screw it in first time and leave it and forget about it. So any of these kinds of packers, you can buy them in big bags from anywhere. In fact, I may leave a link in the description because some people say I couldn't find them. So I'll leave a link in the description of these, okay? So what I've got is longest level that you've got. You can use a laser, but I actually prefer a stick for something like this because laser can be a little bit sort of um, hard to actually get exactly right. And what we're just going to do is I'm going to hold my level as plumb as possible. There we go. Just clamping it to there. So we're nice and true. And then I can see what I need. I need a bit of a decent bit of packing behind here. Let's go for that. Something like like that. Then I'm going to push it nice and hard with the packer behind. And once I'm happy with the amount of shim or packing we need, which is good, then I can. T I, I know that's what I need. Take that away, so I'm not trying to balance anything. Start the screw off. As soon as I see the screw through the other side, pop here. Pop the horseshoe shims in. They seem to click on, and then drive it home. So it's so easy and quick and ultimately accurate. So all we do now is we put a series of fixings in this one, get it nice and straight. I like to go in the middle and then once the middle's there, the chances are you can just pack that one top and bottom because the batten will hold it straight. So we'll take the middle next again. First of all, air defenders, drill a hole into somewhere, a nice brick. Put, work the packers out quickly. And all I've got to do now is just push hard because the spring of the batten is coming in and out. And work out that's not enough. You can see how bad the wall is because I'm using lots of packers. That's probably too much. Change the color. They're all different measurements. These are fives, for example. This is a three, so I've got 13 millimeters here. Pop that back. Bang my level on, still a bit too much. You can see there's a gap at the bottom of the level there. We don't want that. So let's try, let's actually try just the two browns and push it really hard. Actually, I think that is much more like it, look. All right, same again, put the screw in. Wait you can see it. Pop your shims on. There we go. Drive it home. And you've got a lovely fixing. And a nice flat wall. So, I'll just, before I finish that one, I'm gonna fix, or show you how I'd fix these ones. So, using a straight edge, a level, or something like that, what we're going to do next, once that first one's fixed, is come through 
sideways, okay? Let me just take that out of the way. And we are gonna actually fix the middles of the others in with the middle of our wall here. So you can see when I press that against there, I'm touching every single stud. Ed might be able to show you that. Ed's here, by the way, you can't see him, but he's there. So you can see that we're against the studs and against the one we just fixed on the wall at the end. So we just got to pull these up to there. Again, it's a really simple job. And to speed the process up now, I'm just going to put all of my masonry drill bits in everywhere. I'm going to do all the drilling now. Then all I've got to do is pack and fix. I'm going to put some screws in my pouch, drill them all, put a screw in each hole so I can see where I've drilled and so I don't forget them. So that's the next job. This one is the one for the plasterboard, so I also want to check that he's nice and straight this way when I put the first hole in. So what I want to do is make sure he's nice and true like this. Hold the level against there and drill. And I'll just pop a couple of screws in there so I, don't, I can see where I've gone. Go, go for some more. So that speeds the process up. So as I mentioned, we'll just get these two attached first in the middle, and then we'll just start straightening in between each. And um, it's easy. That looks about right, look. Eight millimeters. So we'll just whack our screw through a bit. Pop our packers on. Give him a little tap. Next one. It says trial and error to get the right amount of packer in, but it doesn't take no time. In fact, that screw biting pushes the batten back to my line, which actually aids me. Then I can just put my packers in and attach that back. Check it for straight. But you get the idea. And so everything runs through really nicely. So now that bit's done, we are on to the last bit. Again, with the same straight edge, you can literally just make sure that you keep your fixings packed nicely. I'll just do one more stud. It's quite nice. That's good. This one here is tight. That's a straight home. This one's definitely a pack job, so is that one. I also buy a bag of yellows. The yellows are a millimeter because every now and then you need to just give it a little tiny bit more. And this is the ideal scenario for that.
nice. Come through the bottom again. It should be nice and straight because the bottom has got this bottom piece here. So you can see that that all looks pretty good. Just pull that through, pack it off. These two are easy. So that's it, I've got one more screw and the wall is done. So we'll get that one finished. And you can see how easy it makes the job but moreover, how accurate it makes the job. And that is a simplified way of battening a wall, making the job easier and accurate. Now you can see that we've got solid bridging in the stud or, or noggins. You could effectively put some through there, but there's a lot of strength here as opposed to these hold all of those from moving around um, allegedly, but no, so you can actually put, if, you, if, you, if you're railroading your plasterboards, you may want to put some noggins through there. And in which case you can pretty much just, you know, just skew screw them or something like that. Very straightforward. Anyway, thanks for joining me. Hope you enjoyed this and I hope uh, you try it. And if you do, let me know how you get on.